Florida is no longer a tourist paradise. It's now the invasion capital of America. Just 4% of plant species are invasive, but they cost Florida half a billion dollars each year and make it the second most ecologically devastated state in the country. But now they're proposing a biological project that's sparking fierce debate among American scientists. They plan to release a giant creature that can hunt and wipe out all invasive species here. But in this smart project, they've overlooked the simplest thing. Is this plan a salvation or the start of a new disaster? Stay tuned until the end to find out. Florida was once America's natural paradise. The vast Everglades marshes nurtured over 700 native species in a harmonious ecosystem for thousands of years. But now, it's become a chaotic zoo. More than 500 invasive species have flooded in, taking over more than 1.7 million acres of natural habitat. Though they make up only 4% of all plant species, they account for 33% of the state's biomass. That means for every three trees, one doesn't belong here. Florida is now second only to Hawaii in ecological destruction. With over $500 million in losses each year, why do all these invasive species end up in Florida? Because it's the biggest pet trade hub in the United States. The hot, humid, subtropical climate is so ideal that every runaway guest can survive and thrive. Laws have tightened, but too late. Now climate change is erasing the winter wall. The cold that should have killed off these outsiders every year. With winter gone, invasives explode in number. And when every method seems to fail, they've decided to release an animal capable of eating these invaders. Yes, you heard that right. But what kind of animal could take them on? The answer, the Komodo dragon. Growing up to 10 feet long and weighing over 300 pounds, the Komodo dragon is no ordinary lizard. It can swallow a full-grown deer in minutes, absorbing up to 80% of its body weight in one meal. Think it's just a big, slow brute? Think again. Komodos can sprint at nearly 12 miles per hour, about as fast as a track athlete. But their most terrifying trait isn't strength, it's patience and strategy. They ambush for hours, and with a single bite, venom in their mouths sends prey's blood pressure crashing, stops clotting, and causes a slow, painful death. If the prey escapes, the Komodo will track the scent of blood for miles until its victim collapses. Even if only one survives, this species can reproduce without a male, a rare natural phenomenon called parthenogenesis. Just one can start an empire. So, if a Komodo dragon appeared in the Florida swamps, who would really rule? And here's the wild part. A creature from Southeast Asia, halfway around the world, could find a perfect second home in Florida. Just imagine, year-round heat and humidity, dense brush for ambushes, and above all, plenty of food. Wild hogs, Burmese pythons, panthers, water birds, and even pets in suburban neighborhoods. This would be a Komodo island, even better than Indonesia. But the real issue is, if Komodo dragons truly set foot here, Florida could create a new, fiercer, smarter version. Living in cities, they'd learn to adapt. Raiding trash cans, sports fields, neighborhoods. No longer afraid of people, but seeing us as just another part of their hunting ground. Under competition, their breeding rates could skyrocket turning Florida Komodos into hybrid monsters of nature and city. If Komodos really come to Florida, the first creature they'll meet won't be humans or alligators. It'll be the army of wild hogs, breeding like viruses. These are descendants of pigs brought by the Spanish in the 16th century. They root up forests like hundreds of living bulldozers, eroding riverbanks, muddying and draining water sources, they devour cornfields, spread disease, and cost Florida farmers about $1.5 million a year. A full-grown wild hog can weigh up to 200 pounds, run into one on the road, 
and you'll learn what an ecological accident really means. But what about the Komodo? In Indonesia, Komodo dragons have taken down water buffalo, weighing over 1,300 pounds, with a single bite. Their venom starts breaking down the carcass. There's even video of a Komodo's cousin swallowing a 90-pound pig at a zoo like it's a giant sausage. So if you're wondering who wins this matchup, the answer is almost certain. The wild hog is just the appetizer. But the main course for Komodos in Florida is even scarier, the Burmese python. These snakes can reach 10 to 16 feet, with Florida's record at nearly 20 feet and over 200 pounds. They've wiped out over 90% of medium-sized mammals in the Everglades in just 20 years. They don't hunt selectively. They eat anything they can swallow. Coyotes, white-tailed deer, rare birds, even your pet dog or cat if it gets lost. They're masters of camouflage. You could walk right by a 16-foot python and never know it until it's too late. Scientists have found American alligators, native monsters, in the stomachs of captured pythons, a worthy rival for the Komodo. So what happens when these two reptilian titans clash? The answer boils down to two things, who bites first and who bleeds out faster. Komodos don't just have sharp teeth. They have a deadly biological weapon. Even a small wound will weaken the python by the minute, while the Komodo calmly stalks it like a patient assassin, waiting for the apex predator to fall and become the main course. Sounds like an epic showdown, right? But wait, don't forget the most important thing. The Komodo dragon is also an invasive species. It doesn't care who's a pest or a natural icon. It only sees one thing, moving prey. That means native species already devastated by pythons will be wiped out even faster and more painfully. Think about it. The Florida panther, the pride of American wildlife, has only about 200 left in the wild. But if one panther accidentally wanders into Komodo territory, one ambush, one bite, and it's gone. Just like hitting skip ads. The same goes for rare birds, marsh rabbits, raccoons, or any small creature barely hanging on. The weaker, slower, smaller ones become the perfect appetizer. Want to restore the ecosystem? Or are you about to witness a next-level massacre? Worse, Komodos don't just sit and wait for fate. In a new environment, their behavior will evolve. No longer avoiding humans like on Komodo Island, where forests keep them isolated. In Florida, they could walk right into neighborhoods, raid trash cans, show up on sports fields, swim in canals where kids play. And with easy food, their breeding rate could skyrocket. One parthenogenetic female is enough to start a new dynasty. See the danger? A predator beyond all control. A biological disaster also lurks quietly. Invasive species often bring viruses and bacteria that native animals have no immunity against. On the flip side, Komodos could fall victim to Florida's local diseases. One fungus, one local bacteria, and the entire Komodo population could be wiped out as if it never existed. And that's not all. The cane toad, a tiny creature packing enough toxin to kill a 300-pound Komodo with a single lick. Want to release dragons to fight invasives? The dragon could become the first casualty. If things go wrong, you know what happens? Money. Lots of it. And all of it comes from taxpayers' pockets on top of the half billion dollars already lost, and that's before the Komodo dragons arrive, nationwide, invasive species have cost the United States over $1.22 trillion since 1960. The number grows every year, and the Release the Dragon project would only make that chart spike higher. Do you want your taxes spent hunting dragons in your backyard? because conservation history is full of tragedies. Australia released cane toads to save their sugar crop, and the result was the collapse of their entire predator ecosystem. Some islands released mongooses to protect food supplies, 
only to see seabirds vanish without a trace. Lionfish were brought to the Atlantic for aquariums, and now they're killing coral reefs en masse. History doesn't lie. 100% of release this to kill that projects have ended in a new disaster. And that's just the beginning. If Komodo dragons become a problem, Florida will have to pay for everything. Importing, transporting, releasing, tracking, compensating for damages, and finally exterminating the very dragons once seen as saviors. Meanwhile, the campaign to hunt Burmese pythons has cost tens of millions of dollars, yet their numbers keep climbing out of control. That's why, while the Komodo dragon idea is still just on paper, another quieter experiment is happening in the Everglades. This time, they didn't pick a 300-pound monster that can swallow a deer in minutes. They chose something much smaller, the honey badger. Less than three feet long, weighing about as much as a three-year-old child, but recognized by Guinness World Records as the most fearless animal on Earth. Even lions think twice about messing with it. You might ask, what can something that small do? But picture an animal with skin as tough as armor, immune to snake venom, smart enough to pick locks, and stubborn enough to fight back even when it's down. It attacks cobras without a second thought. It steals food right in front of leopards and strolls away. What does Florida see in it? A natural weapon targeted at the biggest enemy, the Burmese python, the culprit behind the disappearance of 90% of medium-sized mammals in the Everglades over 20 years. Traps, infrared drones, professional python hunters, all have failed. But when honey badgers appeared in secret test areas, the game began to change. Python nests dropped by 30% in just a few months, and cameras caught honey badgers dragging pythons twice their size through the swamp. And amazingly, raccoons, marsh rabbits, and native birds, species thought extinct, started to reappear. Few, but real. But now we have to face the truth. The real cause of this chaos isn't wild hogs, Burmese pythons, Komodo dragons, or honey badgers. The problem is always humans. We brought these species to new lands, and when things fell apart, instead of stopping, we tried to fix it with even bigger, riskier, and harder to reverse mistakes. We say we're saving nature, but are we just pouring fuel on the fire? What do you think about today's story? Leave your thoughts below. Your comments could change the story the world is telling. If you enjoy explorations like this, hit like, subscribe, and turn on notifications, because in the next episodes, we'll keep uncovering ecological secrets that could change the fate of the Earth. See you on the next adventure.